Welcome to Cove, a seaport town in Cork Harbour. In the distance, you can see our destination, Spike Island. Spike Island is 103 acres and has a rich history dating back some 1300 years, with visitors today coming from far and wide. Cove is best known as the last port of call of the ill-fated Titanic, which departed Cove on the 11th of April 1912. Welcome aboard the ferry. The journey to the island only takes 10 minutes and you can enjoy the beautiful Cork Harbour scenes on your journey. Since Viking times, Cork Harbour, the second deepest in the world, has been vital to the development of overseas trade and commerce in Ireland. A trip to Spike Island includes a fascinating guided tour. John Goulding will be my guide for the day. He's been a lead guide in Spike for many years now and knows an awful lot about Spike's rich history and heritage. John and I will start our tour at Bastion 3. So John, we're now up in Bastion 3. You yep. might tell us a little bit about the importance of where we are. Yeah, no problem. So um, a Bastion is um, part of the star-shaped fort. Uh, there's six pointy parts of the star here and they're called Bastions. This is Bastion number three and this is the most important one because it's pointing at the only entrance and exit in and out of Cork Harbour. So this is the area of the fort which would have had the guns um, pointing at the entrance to the harbour along with the other two bastions either side of us and also importantly this area had the battery observation post so all the communication equipment and telescopes and stuff like that which would be used to look at the entrance to the harbour and also to be in contact with the other forts at the entrance to let them know of any um, oncoming, oncoming enemies or anything like that. And when was this built, John? So the building of the fort began around 1790. That's when it was commissioned. It did take 50 to 60 years to finish it after that. So it was a lot of time and money was needed to finish off the fort. Um, the building of the fort was finished off by the prisoners who were here from the 1840s on. Um, they were prisoners here on the island, thousands of them um, over the years, and they were used as the free labor to finish off the fort. Very good. And what else can we see from here? So yeah, so this is uh, one of the best viewing points. Not only can we see the entrance to Cork Harbour, we can also see uh, the other parts of the fort. So we're looking down at the moat area to my left and also to your right over there. So we can see into the area which was the kind of the barrier between the fort and the outside of the fort itself, the moat area, and also the flanking galleries, which were the kind of sniper positions if anyone was trying to attack your fort. They were a very good defensive position to have if someone is trying to attack you. John, we're at the main entrance now to the fort. What happened here in 1938? Yeah, okay, so I suppose on the 11th of July, 1938, that was the first time that the Irish actually took over the running of Spike Island. And that's the first day that the Irish flag was raised over the fort. Um, this all leads back to the Anglo-Irish Treaty, which was uh, signed in December 1921. It created the 26 county Irish Free State, but the British made sure that as part of the agreement, they were going to be allowed to hold on to parts of the Free State. Um, they'd put so much time, money and investment into their Atlantic defence in Ireland, they didn't want to give it up. So for 16 years after the birth of the Free State, they were still in control of Loch Swilly in Donegal, Bearhaven in West Cork and parts of Cork Harbour, including here on Spike Island. And it's only on the 11th of July 38 that Eamon de Valera, the leader at the time, arrived here on Spike and he was given back control of the Cork Harbour port from here on Spike Island. So John, we're now in the middle of the prison grounds. You might tell us a little bit about the buildings that surround us here. Yeah, no problem. So right behind here now is the B Block. This is a former hospital and currently the archaeology department resides here. And then straight behind, with the building with the clock face, is Mitchell Hall. Um, that's a former barracks, former church. It's the current museum. Then moving to the left, uh, that triangular building, it's currently our cafe, and it used to be another church, and also where people in the army did sort of marching exercises. To the left of that, uh, behind the wall, are the A-class and B-class cells, used up until 2004 to house young offender prisoners. Moving to the left again, we have the punishment block, uh, built in the 1860s to punish convict prisoners who were here during the famine times and the decades afterwards as well. Right behind it, called the Shell Store, which was used to hold gunpowder, but also as a children's prison for boys in the famine times. Then moving behind to my left, behind that wall was the C-class cells, another part of the modern prison, um, which housed 24 prisoners in the modern era. Straight behind me is the 1916 block, 
Uh, this building was named uh, because it was set on fire and burnt in 1916. It's in a very bad condition to this day, but still standing. And then finally, we have the A block over here, uh, probably the most historical building in the fort, in my opinion. And we can head over there now, if you would like. Brilliant. Thanks, John. No problem. So, John, what was significant about the A block? Okay, so the A block is probably, in my opinion, the most historical building in the fort because it's connected to nearly every part of the history of the fort. It was in any, all of the prison eras, this was used. So the famine times, this was a prison building. The War of Independence, this was an internment building. And also in a modern prison, this was the first building in 1985 the prisoners were put into. And also the first one they set on fire in 1985 and completely destroyed the interior. But as well as that, it was a barracks for the British Army, British Naval Service, Irish Army, Irish Naval Service, and also being one of the two oldest buildings in the fort, it's um, got a special place in all of our hearts here for all of the history it has. John, we're now outside the punishment block. What kind of things were happening to prisoners in here? Well, this building, as you said, is called the punishment block, and it was built in 1860. Uh, just to punish some convict prisoners, also to isolate prisoners. So if you wanted to keep prisoners apart from the rest of the population, if they had some maybe some infectious diseases or uh, mental illness, you didn't want them with the other prisoners. Or even the Irish Republicans, they didn't want them spreading their message about revolution and rising to all the other prisoners. They were kept inside in this building. And this building was cold, dark, damp, always wet, and you could be locked up in your cell for up to 23 and a half hours a day, only let out for half an hour just for a small bit of fresh air and exercise. There was a prisoner, Patrick Tierney. What was what, what happened to him here? Yeah, so he was kept in this building in the 1860s. Uh, the reason he was put in here is because he tried to escape off the island twice. He was an Irish Republican and he'd been um, sent to Spike Island because he, even though he was in the British Army, he was secretly an Irish Republican. He tried to kill someone who found out about him, so he was sent to Spike. He tried to escape off Spike twice. Both times he was caught on a boat almost towards Cove. The second time his punishment was inside in this building and they pretty much left him in here until he died, um, is what they were um, concerned with really. He was released after seven years in this building though, which is a very long time, after his sister in County Clare tracked him down and complained about the conditions he was being kept in this building. So he, he was released a year and a half later. He was made immigrate out of Ireland. Uh, he w went to New York City and he died that very same year. He was only 41. This building had destroyed his mind and his body especially from being locked up in that cell for so many years. It's awful. Where are we now, John? Okay, so we're standing in front of the A-class and B-class cells. These were prison cells which were used in the modern prison era, yeah. and they were only uh, last in use in 2004. Uh, they kept 80 prisoners, so 40 in the A-class and 40 in the B-class. Okay, it's a real kind of a creepy feeling here, isn't there, haunting? Yeah, actually, do you know what? We've had people who've lived on the island, worked on the island, and been in prison on the island, have had their own paranormal experiences over mm -hmm. the years. They've seen ghostly figures, they've really? seen and heard stuff which they can't explain. We've had some ex-prisoners come back to us over the years that have said they were sleeping one night and saw something or heard something which scared the life out of them. And we do do nighttime tours. Mm -hmm. That's when this building would be open for. And we have had uh, visitors, tourists, come over to us and take photos of strange figures which to me i look at them i can't explain them either so wow. i'm not sure what to say about that <laughs> wow amazing john we're up in bastion six we can see cove to our right and just to our left here we can see the shell store and the punishment block uh, a lot of people left spike island and and went further afield to places like australia you might tell us a little bit about their fate yeah, so this was a pretty much a convict prison and a transportation hub from the 1840s up until the 1880s. So you could be sent to Spike Island uh, for any crime at all during those years. It could have been as serious as murder or it could have been as light as vagrancy, which was just being homeless and or begging on the streets. This was especially prevalent during the famine times when lots of people had no home or money or food. You were sent to Spike Island for one or two years of hard labor. And then after that, the Hulk ships would come into the harbor here uh, they would load up the convict prisoners and they would force you off to parts of Australia or parts of the Caribbean, which were in the British Empire, for seven or even 14 more years of hard labour over, over there until you were released. So yeah, there was lots of forced immigration out of um, Ireland from here on Spike Ireland. And you said thousands of people were, were going? Oh yeah, thousands upon thousands. Uh, at any one point during the Irish famine, there was over 2,300 prisoners in here on any one day. So there was tens of thousands of people sent here over those decades and sent off to um, Australia or the Caribbean, as I said. And this really would have been the last time they ever touched Irish soil because it was pretty much a one-way ticket. Um, when you were over there, you weren't coming back home. So this would have been the last time they saw or touched a part of Ireland. 
and a lot of people come back to, to Spike, don't they, from Australia and, yeah. and places? Yeah, over the years we get people from New Zealand, Australia, parts of the Caribbean, Canada, America, who come back here and they can trace their ancestors back here to Spike Island. And as I said, some, a lot of them were here for very small crimes and stuff like that as well, so they can trace their ancestry back here to Spike Island, which is an amazing thing to go, for them, I would suppose, to come back here and see the place where their um, great, great, great grandfather possibly last saw. Not only rich in history, Spike has some wonderful walks for you to explore too. If you're lucky, you can even spot some native Irish wildlife on the trails. John, thank you so much for having me here on Spike Island. It was fantastic to learn more about the very rich heritage you have here. No problem at all. I hope you had a great day all together. Um, and just to let everybody know, we're open all year round. Um, we've got daytime tours, nighttime tours, cinema nights, lots of other events. So the best way to stay up to date with all of our events is to follow us on any of our social media pages. And also, if you want to make bookings, uh, it's through our website, spikeislandcork.ie. So that's where people can make bookings for all sorts of uh, daytime or um, other events. So I hope you had a great day now and I hope to see you again. I absolutely did. Thank you so much. Fantastic no problem. Thank tour. you. Thanks a million. What a wonderful tour of Spike Island. John certainly knows an awful lot about the history and heritage here on Spike. We hope next time you can visit in the flesh. Until then, Slán Awalia, goodbye.